In this video, I'll be talking about how to make the perfect product management resume by roasting the resume that I use to get into Google. Over five years ago, I applied to the Google Associate Product Manager program, and I luckily got the job. My resume was pretty stellar, but I think it could always use room for improvement. So I hope that this video is educational in that I will be critiquing the resume that I used and showing you where I think I could have done even better. Now, I'll be pretty picky in this video, so don't be too concerned. I'm sure your resume is already off to a good start, but I'm sure it could use some room for improvement, and I hope this video will be helpful in indicating that. So the first thing that I see when I look at this resume is that it's uh, already organized and formatted quite nicely. Um, I'm pretty impressed with the formatting of how it works, um, but I see one glaring error when I look at the format. Um, there's this human computer interface project that I put in relevant experience and it's not indented correctly. And I know this is a simple, silly issue and um, it doesn't really matter. And people might say, oh, Stephen, why are you complaining about this? But it actually does have an impact. Um, I do think that when you look at a resume and if someone hasn't put a lot of thought and detail into the formatting and how it's been organized, it's simply not worth a recruiter's time. Um, one thing to remember is that recruiters are looking at hundreds of resumes per day, and they look at them for only five seconds. And so if there's an error, a typo, or an issue with formatting, it often shows that the candidate hasn't really been thoughtful about the resume and hasn't really tried to put a lot of effort into making sure this is a great experience for the recruiter to get in the door. So um, I would actually make sure that these indenting formats are fixed because um, there are a couple issues um, that I see with that in this uh, document. Another thing that I don't love about this, so I'm, I'm starting at the top and I'm working my way down. I don't love that there's this coursework in includes section. Um, I don't really need to see that. And as a recruiter, like I kind of already get what the coursework includes, especially if you already put in your major that you're a computer science major. Um, that seems extraneous information. And honestly, with resumes, it's important to keep things as lean and simple and concise as possible. Um, I know a lot of people have this temptation to put in as much content as possible into their resume because, you know, it's like those cheat sheets in college where if you put in as much information as possible, maybe that'll get in the door. Maybe that ATS or, you know, those computer computer systems will pick up the keywords, but in fact, it's actually better to be more concise and clear about what you want to prioritize. Um, as any good product manager might do, you want to make sure you're prioritizing what you actually have in your resume, as well as you might prioritize what features you have in your product. And um, having this course or include section shows to me that this person hasn't really thought about what courses like are actually important and what information is actually important to be showing to the recruiter. Some things that I like about this initial section is that it does include um, the education and the core components. So when I look at this resume, I see, hey, this is education. This is immediately what I want to see. This is a new graduate resume. So education is at the top. If you are not a new graduate, I would recommend putting education at the bottom um, because it's less important than your relevant experience. In this case, old Steven didn't have that much experience. And so therefore he put education to the top. Um, I think to be totally honest though, if I were going back to it, I probably would put education below because there is relevant experience here on the resume that um, could be highlighted a little bit more. Next, there's high school on here and I really don't wanna see that on the resume. High school information is so old and especially um, as you think about it, if an actual recruiter is looking at your resume, they don't care what high school you went to. They don't care what GPA you got. They don't care what courses you did in high school. Um, high school is such a long time ago. It's like uh, asking someone what sports they did in uh, elementary school to determine if they should be an athlete in a uh, professional world. So do not include high school information. I'm regretting that I put that on there. Um, but, you know, I, I get the temptation because you want to put something there. You feel like there's maybe not enough information. Trust in the fact that brevity is the key and having less information is better. So now we get into the relevant experience section. And so one thing that I'm immediately noticing is that there's four relevant experiences, um, which is great. Um, but they're, they're kind of different in nature and it actually confuses me. So there's this, you know, tropical clinics internship. And then there's this project. And then there's like this engineering projects and community service. Which I'm not super clear. Is that a, a work experience? or not. Um, and this is like a mid-infrared technology experience. And so knowing myself, I know that these were some of these were internships, some of these were projects. Um, but what I would prefer called out more explicitly is like, what are these things? Like, are they internships? Are they work experiences or other projects? You could do that in the italicized section below, or you could do that even just in the header and just say relevant job experience and be really clear to only include that there. Um, I'm just having a confusion as I look at this resume, like what are these things? Are these all experiences? One of them was only done in spring of one year, so it doesn't really make sense and they don't have a consistency to them, so which makes it harder for me to understand. 
Now, when I look at the actual bullet points, and I don't want to get too into the weeds here, I am a little disappointed. Um, so when I look at the first section, I see that there are a lot of information that was provided, but there's no numbers. I have no sense of the impact. Um, you know, great, I collaborated with the founder, but what did I actually do? Like I, I produced marketing, designing processes, but it doesn't really quantify like how many people saw the things that I produced or, you know, how effective were they? Was there any purpose to them? Were they used in anything? What you want to see in a resume is not only what you did and your role in it, but also the impact that it had to the organization. As a recruiter, when I look at a resume, I want to say, hey, this person is going to make a lot of a big difference at our company. And I'm not totally sure I see that from this resume. I see a lot of helpful words of organizing, creating material and all that kind of stuff, but they don't really indicate anything that would be specifically to me that indicates that, hey, this person would be a really great product manager at your team. This person is known for having a big impact. This person um, can operate under complexity, a lot of scale. And so I'm not seeing that here. So I would rephrase the bullet points to make sure that I'm including the impact to include maybe a little bit more product management as well. I'm not seeing that much of, okay, great. Like this person actually did a lot of product management work. Um, I do see that in some of the later sections below, but I'm not seeing that in this main section. So I'm sort of missing something here uh, of, you know, both the impact and then also is this person doing product management work. As I go down, I actually really like this like human computer interface project. Um, it's a student led project developed an Android application, um, went through design process, creating prototypes, etc. I really like that. Um, that shows to me that this person knows how to think through product management. They've done actual product management work. Um, what I'm missing here is the specific components that they did that were product oriented. So I see a lot of like, you know, development and things like that and going through a design process, going through prototypes and stuff, things like that. But I'm not seeing um, actual like product management. Like did they uh, organize the team? Did they run the team meetings? Did they define what the product vision should look like? Things like that. And so one thing that I'm getting from this resume is that this person might not actually fully understand what product management is. Um, and so one key assignment for you watching is if you are writing a resume and you don't quite understand what product management is or what an effective product manager does, um, I might review that before I actually go through this resume um, and be go before you go through the process of creating your resume because otherwise it's hard to know what to highlight, right? And so you might ask me, Stephen, like, how do I know what a product manager does? It's so confusing. There's all these videos, but I don't actually know what it is. There is a simple answer. And uh, the job description of the role that you're applying for spells it out. And so one thing that I often do when I look at my relevant experience section or when I make my relevant experience section is really looking through that job description, seeing what words they use, and then highlighting those words in my own resume. So that's just my simple hack is just look at the job description. They're already telling you what they're looking for. Now, as we go down in this section, we have university leadership. And I think for a new grad, this section is actually really, really important. Um, showcase to me what you actually care about, what have you done in the university, what is something that you're skilled at outside of necessarily uh, strictly job experience that might be applicable or relevant or helpful. And I think leadership in particular is a really important one for product management resumes because leadership is something that you will be doing as a product manager often in a team or an organization or um, with engineering uh, leaders. So now when I look at the university leadership section, I see editor-in-chief, which is great. I see that there's this person who's done a puzzle hunt club. I see that there's a biomedical engineering society, a health advisory board. And, you know, these aren't necessarily bad things to include on a resume. Um, but I also do sort of, you know, slightly wonder, like, does this person have a health bent? What does that mean? And, you know, it's, it's not a problem. It could be a passion or an interest that this person has. Um, overall, I actually really like this section. One thing I love about this section is how concise it is. It's just saying like, hey, this is what this person has done. My one piece of feedback is that this person maybe doesn't prioritize too much. It seems like there's four different university leadership roles and they're quite different. And so, you know, even though you've done all four of them, I might recommend picking just a few of them to focus on. So maybe picking two and then elaborating a little bit more on those two. The next two sections are pretty standard and simple honors and skills. I think uh, these can be really helpful to include depending on the role. Personally, I don't really find that skills offers that much. Um, we sort of already know that you know how to use Microsoft Word, or we sort of already know that you might know a little bit of coding. Um, what's more important is to showcase a little bit more of your personality, your skill set, things that you're passionate about. So sometimes I may take this section nowadays to write something about a hobby that I have or something that I'm particularly good at outside of work. 
and honors can be helpful, um, especially if they're pertinent to the role. But again, lower priority. The real meat of this resume that I want to see is that relevant experience section. And so make sure that you highlight that as much as possible. Talk about your relevant experiences. Talk about what you've done in the past. Maybe even list out other hackathon projects that you've worked on so that you can showcase to the recruiter, hey, I know about product management. I really like product management. I've done a lot of things that are adjacent or similar to product management, and I'd love to work at your company. Uh, one common question that I get in this process is, oh my gosh, what if I'm not technical? Will my resume be effective? And the answer is yes, you can be super effective if you are non-technical. All you need to do is, again, look at that job description and highlight the experiences that you have that map to the skills on the job description. For instance, if you're a consultant, maybe you have done a lot of analyses. So I'll highlight all the rigorous analysis you've done, all the different experiments and tests that you've analyzed and ran, and that will actually showcase that you have a lot of this product management experience without necessarily having the direct product manager title. So I hope this was helpful. And you know, to recap, I think this resume is pretty solid. And um, obviously, it was my resume that I used to get into the Google role. Um, but there are areas of improvement that I'd improve, including formatting, um, generally just really expanding that relevant experience section and making the other sections much more concise and reducing them, and highlighting the specific product management skills that I used in the role and the impact that I had. The last thing that I want to make sure you know, and this is because this is such a common issue, again, is being concise. What I'm not saying is that this relevant experience section should have five bullet points for every single section. In fact, three to four is a good number. But what it should do is it should be more impactful. It should be more meaty when I look at these experience sections. It shouldn't be that I just added a bunch more lines and words. Um, having small font in your resume is not effective. You want to have big font, make it really clear, and make it concise. I hope this resume roast was helpful in understanding a little bit more about how recruiters look at resumes and how I think about my own resume. And I hope you hear the humility in my own voice of, you know, not everyone's resume is perfect and there's always room for improvement. So good luck on crafting your resume and landing your dream job.